The Democratic Senator from Connecticut, Chris Murphy. Senator Murphy, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. So China obviously in the spotlight, the new China Select Committee holding a prime time hearing tonight, the first of its kind. And it comes as the Biden administration is warning China against providing lethal aid to Russia. In fact, as you know, Jake Sullivan told Chuck on Sunday the U.S. had not yet seen evidence that China was doing that. So I'm curious, what is your level of concern at this very moment that China may actually provide that lethal aid to Russia? I think it's extraordinary that China has provided no military aid to Russia during the first year of the Ukraine war. This is um, a country, China, that declared there would be no limits to its partnership with Russia at the beginning of the war, but it has been effective U.S. diplomacy, in part, that has convinced China to stand down. Now, Russia is at a uniquely vulnerable moment right now. They simply don't have the ammunition, the equipment, the supplies, the technology to keep this war up for another year. And the only place they can really go for what they need is to China. Now, unfortunately, China has an interest in keeping this conflict going, right? China benefits if the United States and Russia are at each other's throats, if we're draining our treasuries, fighting each other, at least through proxies. Uh, and so there's a clear interest that China may have in supplying these weapons, but we've got to make it clear to China that there will be significant uh, consequences to their economy um, if they make this decision so, to start flowing weapons there. So, and, Senator, the administration has said there will be consequences. I hear you saying there should be sanctions if China does, in fact, take this move, supplying lethal aid to Russia. Anything not, else? I, yeah, I think I w will be willing to work with the administration on whatever set of consequences they think are most impactful. I don't necessarily think we need to pre-announce what those would be. Um, but China has held back uh, weapons supplies to Ukraine thus far because they know that those consequences are real. And China's just going to have to weigh whether the benefit of this war continuing for another year to them is worth the price of deeper fissures in the relationship between the United States and China. Senator, the Biden administration has been clear that this is a concern for them, even though they haven't seen China take this step yet. I wonder, do you think the administration should declassify the intelligence so that the American public can understand the source of their concern? I think this is different than the information we had about uh, Russia's intentions to invade Ukraine. I, I don't think it would shock anybody in America to learn that China is thinking about supplying weapons to Russia. Again, they announced that this was going to be a deep integrated partnership between these two countries at the outset of the war. So um, at, at the moment when they declassified the intelligence about the invasion, there was a lot of skepticism all around the world that Russia was really going to go forward with it. I don't think there's that same skepticism about China's intentions. Well, I, I hear you, Senator, and yet these are quite serious accusations that the administration is leveling against China. In fact, ones that you could argue are adding to the tensions between the two nations. Why not, given, as you point out, that they did declassify the intelligence before Russia invaded Ukraine. Why not do it now? Why not be as transparent as possible with the American public as they make this case? Well, I mean, that was an exceptional situation, right? Um, you literally had our allies in Europe disbelieving that the Russians were intent on invading Ukraine. This is just a fundamentally different situation. And the reason that we don't declassify intelligence is because it often um, betrays our sources and methods. We were willing to take that chance because of the exceptional disbelief in Europe about Russia's intentions to invade. That disbelief just simply doesn't exist here, and so there's not the reason to potentially compromise the ways in which we get our intelligence. Senator, have you seen the intelligence just before we move on? I haven't seen the raw okay. intelligence. I, I, and, and just to be clear, I rarely ever see the raw intelligence. What we see is the analysis from the administration, and I trust the analysis we get from the Biden administration. Okay, let's move on to these new findings by the Department of Energy, which has assessed with low confidence that COVID was likely the result of an accidental lab leak in Wuhan. Uh, yet the White House has repeatedly said yesterday, look, there's just no broad consensus on where COVID originated. What do you make of the findings by the DOE? What should the American people take from it? 
I think we may never know with high confidence where this virus began. You have very respected experts that are sure that it came or very confident it came from uh, animal sources. You now have the Department of Energy suggesting with low confidence they believe it came from uh, a lab. Um, what I know is that China withheld critical information at the beginning of the spread of this virus and that it frankly argues not for less integration between the U.S. and China, but for more integration between the United States and China on public health defense so that we have access to information as early as possible when a virus breaks out somewhere around the world. Senator, let's move on to Ukraine. President Zelensky has called for F-16 fighter jets. President Biden says he's not sending them right now. A lot of your colleagues there on Capitol Hill say that's the wrong move. They say that the administration is giving President Zelensky enough aid to stay in the war, but not to win the war. What say you? Should the Biden administration provide the F-16 fighter jets? So our first responsibility as a Congress is to defend our nation. Uh, and we want to make sure we flow as much weaponry to Ukraine um, as we can without harming our ability to defend ourselves and our treaty allies. Remember, we have treaty obligations with NATO partners who are also in line for many of these same uh, weapon systems. And so we are getting to a critical point in which we are potentially compromising uh, American security and treaty ally security. And so on these F-16s, I, I think the president is just making a judgment right now that they are not immediately necessary. But I hear you for, saying they may the be fight. necessary. I hear you and, saying they may be necessary, that he should be open to setting them potentially. Well, I, I, I agree with the president's assessment that right now that this is not the most important weapon system for Ukraine and that right now sending these planes potentially jeopardizes the security of this country and of our treaty allies. And that's the balance that the president always has to be engaged in. OK, understood. Let's move on to 2024, Senator. There was a op-ed in the New York Times yesterday that got a lot of people's attention. It essentially called for delegates to choose the vice presidential nominee. Let me read you part of it. It says, quote, allowing Democratic voters to pick the vice presidential nominee might address the Democrats' enthusiasm gap. If the status quo continues, no one on the Democratic side will excite or inspire a crowd. What do you make of that? Would you support such a move to have the vice presidential nominee chosen by delegates? I don't know. I haven't read that article. I don't really have a reaction to it. Um, what I see is a lot of enthusiasm out there for Democratic priorities, and what I see is a you know pretty um, amazing track record of success from this president. Um, when I was out there on the campaign trail this fall, I saw Democrats and young voters uh, turning out for rallies and for um, door knock and canvas events at pretty extraordinary numbers. And you saw recent information from swing states suggesting that young voters were turning out at levels comparable to 2018. So I'm not sure that I buy that there's a huge yawning enthusiasm gap between the two parties. I don't really know much about this proposal. I'd have to look into it before passing judgment. All right. Well, Senator Murphy, let me ask you this. Do you believe President Biden is the future of the Democratic Party, the strongest person to represent Democrats in 2024? Absolutely. I'm rooting for President Biden to run. Uh, I'm pushing for him to run. I think he is our strongest candidate. I think Donald Trump is likely the Republican candidate. I don't buy this narrative that the Republican Party has moved on. And I think there's no question that Joe Biden, with his record of success, with his ability to connect with the American people, and with his history of beating Donald Trump in the past, is our best candidate. Senator Chris Murphy, thank you so much for stopping by to discuss a range of topics. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.